Hey, this is Russ. You know, it's time for another knee patient. Yeah. You know, I asked uh, you guys to send me information about your knee journey, and several people did that. And, you know, you guys can still do that, too, if you're interested in participating. Uh, just send me uh, your, your contact info. So what I need from you is uh, your name, uh, which, of course, we will not reveal on here, um, gender, um, age, location, okay? And then uh, send me a couple photos as well. Don't send me video or anything like that. It's too big. So a couple of photos of your knee. Uh, we don't need to see you in it, just your knee. <laughs> so anyways, uh, today we have a gentleman from Nevada, and he will be known as Patient 7M. 7M. And I think like last time, I'm just going to read some of the highlights for you. Uh, he sent me a, a long email that kind of tells me a little bit about his journey. So let's start out with him, okay? So he says that he's been watching Russ's right for quite a while now, and um, he rarely misses an episode. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. And he says he subscribed because he wants to help me hit that thousand mark. Now, by the time this one airs, we might actually hit the thousand mark. All right. Um, when I recorded this, when did I record this? I recorded this on Friday. This is probably going to air on Monday. Um, when I looked at it, we only needed six more people. Yeah, we're that close. <laughs> Might actually happen this coming week. So anyways, he says uh, his journey has been fairly long. I'm looking off camera again, looking, reading his email here. And uh, it's on his right knee. So he had a lot of problems because it's probably from abuse from a lot of sports. Yeah. Uh, volleyball and snow skiing are the primary culprits, he says. <laughs> All right. So um, he had an anthroscopic surgery around 2010. To take care of torn stuff in the knee area. I'm thinking he probably had torn meniscuses or something. Yeah. Um, summer of 2019, he had a complete tear of his ACL while playing some tennis. Okay, so he is an active person. Okay, and he says the medical people says, yeah, if he continues with the stuff, uh, j he can continue to do it until he can't handle it anymore. Okay, so they, they, it sounds like they gave him the okay to go forward until he totally messes his knee up. <laughs> All right. Um, but it sounds like he actually knew it was he it was headed that way. So summer of 2020, um, he was playing frisbee golf in a high terrain area, and the pain and limitations uh, signaled that it was time to do something. Yeah, I think uh, most of us know when it's time to do it. <laughs> That's when we finally just say, "Okay, can't take it anymore. We got to do something." So. Yeah, summer 2020, and so he had a total knee replacement done in September 29th of 2020. So it, it was done with oxanium zirconium. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think you guys like uh, hearing me pr try to pronounce these words, right? Because I cannot pronounce medical things, and I cannot pronounce anything that has to do with, uh, with drugs. <laughs> it's very difficult for me. All right. So uh, he started a log on uh, October 31st just to keep track of how he's been doing, okay? And, of course, he had difficulty sleeping, too. So he slept on the reclining chair just like I did. He spent time watching Russ's right, <laughs> good for him, uh, doing puzzles and doing some reading. And he also watched a bunch of television, <laughs> Re reruns. <laughs> so anyways, um, what else did he say here? He says that uh, for twice a week... Um, uh, PT sessions at home, couldn't get anything past uh, the mid-70s. So he was very frustrated and depressed, which is very typical for many of us. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, he would work on it, and then the progress that he made would just kind of disappear, which is kind of sad, but it does happen that way. So I, I know that happened to me. I One day I'd go in and I'd go, oh, uh, I'm hitting uh, 75, and the next day I'm 71. <laughs> That happens. So uh, in November, he went out and got himself a Sunny Health and Fitness recumbent bike from Amazon. Okay, and he says that uh, that really helped him a lot. And I hear this a lot from people, you know, getting themselves either um, a stationary bike or a recumbent bike, or even one of those little pedal exercise things you put on the floor. You know, those things that you get for like thirty or forty dollars on Amazon has helped a lot of people. So uh, I, I think if you're going to get a knee replacement, definitely get some type of bike system or even those pedal things because that just keeps your knees moving, right? And he says uh, he even reached out and checked out the, the X10, which uh, several people have mentioned before, but he found out how expensive that was. 
uh, and given the fact that the closest machine was over 500 miles away from him. So, yeah, they got to ship that into you. And so you're going to be paying a little bit for it. OK, so he did. It doesn't sound like he used it, but he did check it out. All right. Uh, he knew that the M, um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> all right, he knew that he had to get an MUA possibly too. So he, he went in forward and, uh, he says really it's the mental picture of what they're going to do to you that actually, uh, is the intimidating part. I would tend to agree with that because I think, you know, before I had my first MUA, I could just imagine what they were going to do and what that's going to feel like when they were done. <laughs> Actually, it's not as bad as people think, but um, yeah, it's the mental picture, you know, thinking about what they're doing. So anyways, um, he he continued to do uh, work at home. And um, by November 21st of 2020, he finally had his first night where he spent the entire time in bed. All right. There's there. It, it does come to a point where you um, finally have to make the decision. Uh, I'm going to go for the bed. And I, I know for myself, the same thing happened too. my wife says, aren't you tired of just staying in that recliner? Why don't you try going up to the bed? Right. And I know for me, the first first night was kind of tough, but uh, I stuck with it. And, and of course, now I'm I'm in bed. I'm not <laughs> I'm not a recliner anymore. Um, what else did he say here? He says, um, he, he did exercises, he elevated his leg, and he, he did the hang thing like we did. You know, um, I showed a video where, where you know, you're laying down in bed and you're just kind of bending your knee and let it kind of hang by itself while you're lifting up your leg, right? And uh, that, that seems to have helped him quite a bit too, all right? So he was, uh, he was dangling at about the upper 70s, but when he was pushed, he was pushed to the upper 90s. And uh, his extension seemed to be in the low 20s, all right? So anyways, uh, by December 31st, his figures are now roughly, uh, the dangle is about 105, and his, um, his pushing, um, he was getting 125. Yeah, so that's pretty good. However, his extension still uh, was in the low 20s. So uh, he says, I think I must be measuring my extension not well since my PT says I'm more like 10. <laughs> this, is, this is why I can't give a final answer to what my extension is either. I'm not really sure. I can't really measure it that well on my own. So, uh, but the last couple times that I measured, uh, I measured about eight. Yeah, so I'm gonna call my, my extensions for me today at eight degrees. Okay, you know that I started out with the jazz things. I was at about 10, but I was at 20 degrees too once I got out of my uh, my MUA. And, um, it, uh, it got down to 10 degrees uh, while I was still working in physical therapy, uh, mostly pushing on my own, quite frankly. We didn't do that much pushing in, in physical therapy, which I think was the one thing that we could have worked harder on at PT, but we didn't. I think they were more concerned about my flexion. And uh, while my flexion is pretty decent today, my extension still remains at eight. Yeah, you need to get that closer to zero if you want to you know, keep your legs straight and be able to walk well. So anyways, uh, he credits the recumbent bike as the major reason for his current success. All right. So that says something right there. Okay. So I think if, if, uh, if more of us get uh, some type of bike system and work on that, I think that would help you. So if you don't have one, you know, even the basic pedal thing is worth getting, you know, it's worth the $30 investment for that. And if you can go out and get, you know, a stationary bike or many of us get the recumbent bike because it's easier to sit on that, quite frankly, and, and, and balances. I mean, you're just sitting on a chair, essentially, and then your leg sticks out and you, you pedal. Uh, but if more of us get some type of bike system, I think it would be helpful. So um, what else did he say here? Um his goal is to do some easy skiing by February of this year. So that's coming up pretty soon. Um, he says he thinks he might be able to do that. So he also says uh, thank you for the encouraging uh, uh, videos. And also uh, he likes my music videos, which is good. Thank you. <laughs> you guys should watch the music videos every now and then. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that is our patient 7M, and uh, good luck to him. Sounds like he's back on the road of trying to get there. Uh, sounds like his extension still needs a little bit of help, so we, we hope and pray that you continue doing well with that. Keep working it, and let us know, you know if you do get better in, in that regard as a follow-up. Anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I don't know, by the time this uh, airs, we might actually be at the 1,000 point. If not... You might be the first uh, guy to hit the 1,000 if you hit the subscribe. <laughs> 
Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time.